We got some CF news. What type of CF news? CF like. I uh, wish the ground was mushy and soft. A CF wish oh. type news. Oh. Huh, I wish I could make a cake. <laughs> I feel like you have a lot of sounds this week. A lot of random sounds. Uh, so uh, this is fucking nuts. I had so many people send this to me. People in my personal life. People that I don't fucking know. Just people all over the world. I think sent I saw me this, this article. I think I saw this on, in the peripheral. You know what? You know what's coming here. But I don't. I don't know any details about it. So I'm. I'm excited to get into it with you. Well, thanks to medical advances. Cystic fibrosis is no longer an automatic qualifier for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> oh, whoa, man. It's uh, a, I mean, it, uh, like the decision of, of like removing a drug or sorry, a, a, a disease from like the, the like make a wish list eligibility. Dude, that's feels like a big deal. It, it's, like the only way that you should be, and I don't know anything about this, so I'm speaking before I really know, but yeah. like my feeling is that the only way that you should be able to remove a disease, somebody with a disease from the make a wish list qualifications is if their disease is entirely cured. Well, I mean, here's the thing though, like diet, like if you have diabetes, you don't get a wish. Oh, but like I'm, but my, like, I would say you should. Right. Like I right. would, I would err on the side of like, we should actually, we should actually look up what, what diseases get a wish. I mean, I, I get that they have to draw a line in the sand <laughs> somewhere, does, but like, it's disease? kind of, it should just be all of them. What diseases get a wish? <laughs> I wish I could ride a bow. Um, <laughs> let's see. I frequently ask questions. List of diseases. Here we go. Got it. Oh, wow. Sweet. All right. Um, we have oncology. All forms of cancer that severely restrict the quality of life. Remember uh, when we used to do the disease battles? Yeah, the disease. Yeah, like yeah. Very early in like the first few. Yeah, I don't think people like that. months of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, we stopped. <laughs> uh, hematology, so chronic diseases that require transfusions or other types of therapies, such as um, uh, other types of chronic therapies. So you got like sickle cell in there. You got uh, thalassemia major, uh, apl aplastic anemia. All right, so then you got Im immunodeficiency diseases, such as mm -hmm. uh, congenital immune deficiency, um, which like you know requires like bone marrow transplant, or you got things like HIV. You got metabolic diseases. Severe diabetes is on, diabetes is on there. Severe diabetes. Okay. Se severe severe diabetes. <laughs> but how do they like again? Like where do they draw? Like how do they well, I mean, decide? What is severe and what is not? Well, I don't think they do. I think doctors go. Well, this yeah. diabetes is fucking. Severe. So there's like there's like a yeah. panel of people who yeah, are just yeah, like yeah. evaluating yeah. you. It's all subjective. Um, they uh, they also have in there Goucher's disease with progressive neurological involvement or other similar disease. Don't know what that is. We should uh, look that up. Find someone on the show. Uh, neurology. Okay, so uh, any kind of like brain or spinal tumor. Uh, any progressive degenerative neurological disease, any progressive degenerative myopathy, such as Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, any serious co co uh, congenital diseases, such as Apert syndrome. Um, I didn't say Siri. Shush. Good idea. Okay. I found this on the no, web for no, no, skip no. cut of congenital no, no, diseases, no, no, such no, as Apert syndrome. I don't need that. <laughs> Shut up. How do I, I don't shut have you an up? answer for that. Stop it. Is there something else I can help with? Yes. Just stop listening to me. <laughs> this is the world I'm of AI. Sorry. I'm afraid I can't do that. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, oh man. No. Okay. Uh, cardiology. So all diseases with heart failure. Uh, gastrointestinal tract diseases. So, you know, you got a bunch of stuff in there. End-stage liver failure, that kind of stuff. Kidney uh, disease, such as end-stage kidney re uh, renal failure. Lungs, such as, now they have here now, complex severe cystic fibrosis. Complex severe uh, bronchiac. Tida, bronchi, bronchiitis, bronchiitis, bronchiitis. <laughs> Patients with transplantation or early trans, uh, pre-transplant stage. Do you and think then trauma such as uh, severe burns and uh, polytrauma with permanent disability? Do you think that okay, so um, based go. on so that 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 qualifier of like severe cystic fibrosis? Do you think that you would have still gotten a wish oh, today? No, 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 no. 
So you think that they've gotten like harsher on like how they where they draw the line and yeah. like who gets wishes. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so, I mean, here's what it says. So, so the, uh, the make a wish foundation has announced cystic fibrosis is no longer automatically a qualifying condition because of life changing advances in the outcome of the disease, which is kind of true. It was kind of true. Okay. Kind of true. But I got another, I got another story after this that, uh, Hey, you know, it's a little complicated, not so black and white. Uh, the philanthropic foundation announced the policy change in a news release, um, last Friday. So a week before uh, today, uh, they explained beginning in January 2024, children with cystic fibrosis will only be eligible if they have additional complications or factors that make the current situation critical. So basically, you got to be end stage CF for to, to get to get the wish. Mm -hmm. Which like is OK, so I just want to like jump in right away because that is crazy to me that like it's like you have to be in such a bad place that you wouldn't even be able to really enjoy the wish that much, which kind of sucks. Right. Like, I mean, that's kind of like, true. Yeah. Like if you, if you wanted to, if you wanted to like, I mean, it's, it's, it's all dependent. Right. And again, all of this is dependent on like the kid, not even just CF, like anything I just read out there. You know, if you're a kid that has like, like, you know, fourth degree burns on 90% of his body, it's going to be hard for you to enjoy any fucking wish. Like yeah. you think you're going to go swimming with dolphins. I don't know. I don't like, I don't know if that's happening Yeah, for that kid. You know what I mean? Um, so, but you know, if you're, if you're end stage CF and you're a kid that's got to like, you know, cart around an oxygen tank and like, you don't even have the fucking energy to, to like, like pick up your spoon to eat your cereal in the morning. Um, probably gonna be hard to like go for a skate with, you know, Austin Matthews, but, but on, I guess you know, on a practice skate or something. But I guess shit. my feelings though, is that like, so like, let's take your example of, of having a children's wish. So let's, let's not though. No, no, no but let's just do it for a second. Not, I I'm not. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna go into the details of what you wish for um uh, because a lot of the listeners already know we that already you, know that you just that botched I fucking it. wasted my wish on a shopping spree. The, Thank you very much. <laughs> Move on. But the point is is that you were able to enjoy that experience, right? Oh hell yeah, dude. I got a I got a like a disc bin with shock protector. <laughs> I got a I got a sweet like Randy River uh jacket. <laughs> I got um some nikes yeah some cool shoes yeah <laughs> it's okay so they so, were sick nikes so it is fair to say that you enjoyed that experience but also you did grow up with uh living with a disease and all of the sort of like yeah, yeah, yeah stress and challenges that come with that and so it's not like like i mean getting that wish for you didn't make your cf go away but it was a nice way to be able to realize like Hey, like you're in a shitty situation. Chin and, up, chin up, Buck. And chin like up, here's old Buck. You know, here's yeah. a, a charitable organization yeah. coming around and like trying to make you feel a little bit better for your yeah. special day or whatever, which is a beautiful thing. Like yeah. that's that's amazing. But you're also able to enjoy it. But also, CF fucking sucks. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but here's the, and and then you know, here's the other thing. When I when I got my wish, the life expectancy was not what it is today. You know, like like. When, when I, I mean, when I was born, my parents, you know, they told my parents like ah, 20 years, maybe like mm -hmm. you might see his graduation. And then when I got my wish, they were like, you know, it was like 30. That was the, that was the idea. Mm -hmm. um, but advancements in the treatment have led to cystic fibrosis patients living decades longer. We all know this. The current life expectancy for CF patients born between 2017 and 2021 is 53 years. Okay. That's interesting. Never knew that. Never knew this. Never knew the specifics of the born between dates. That's interesting. Right. Can you say those again? The current life expectancy. So I'm not in this. The current uh, life expectancy for cystic fibrosis patients born between 2017 and 2021. It's very recently. Is 53, which is an increase from 38 a decade ago. Okay, but you were born. I was born in 1988. A, not a decade. Dude, I'm that. probably going to die. Not two decades. Within the next that. few weeks. So it's good that you got a wish. <laughs> yeah, thank God I got my wish. <laughs> but but I, I also, just to clarify too, I'm also not saying that I feel like they're wasting wishes on people who are severely sick. Like no, no, I'm no. not I'm not saying that either. No, no. I, I feel like I'm I'm like Oprah, dude. I'm like, yeah, everybody should get a wish. Yeah. You get a wish. I should get a wish. And if like if all the if all the kids who if all the kids that have CF are as fucking dumb as I am, <laughs> then they should be stoked to be giving out CF wishes because I'll tell you right now. When I could have wished for anything and all I wished for was like some money to go shopping with, they were like, 
Thanks, kid. <laughs> you just saved us like 50 grand. <laughs> They're like, this kid with cancer. You just you just gave six more other patients with <laughs> severe diseases way better wishes than they even wanted. I can't believe there's not like yeah. a wish guide. You know, like you you get like dude, that's an idea. Like somebody who's like yeah. who's like your chaperone through the experience. Like, are you yeah. sh- like, are you sure you want a shopping spree? Yeah. Because like, what about going and playing hockey with the Maple Leafs? Huh, skating with them I wish I could make a cake. I mean, I might as well have made a cake for my wish. <laughs> I want to make a cake. Uh, the Wish Foundation did come out and say, they said, this decision was not made lightly, and we understand it may result in some frustration and disappointment. Um, as with all wish referrals, we will carefully consider any CF request that, is, that a family member, legal guardian, medical professional, or potential, prof- pr- potential wish child believes meets our guidelines. Mm. Uh, the foundation said they will consult a team of 19 physicians from diverse backgrounds, as well as some of the more uh, some of the more than 200 medical advisors who support their chapters to ensure the new rules are applied equitably. Uh, the nonprofit explained they also grant wishes on a case by case basis for several other diseases, including some cancers, epilepsy, sickle cell, and heart disease. Per its website, the Make a Wish Foundation grants life changing wishes for children. <laughs> Did did your uh, wish change your life? Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, it was not a life changing experience. I don't think that's why they need. I mean, wish you know chaperones. what? They, we, we did have lobster dinner, and it was the first time we had escargot, and that's pretty life changing. Did you take a limo too? Yeah. Oh man! Well, yeah, that, I took a long like, car. Took a long car. You're underselling it a little bit because, like, you were in a long car. <laughs> it was a long and car, ate, and you ate sea bugs. escargot. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so they said uh, they, they grant life-changing wishes for children between the ages of two and a half to 18 years old who are diagnosed with a critical illness that is placing the child's life in jeopardy. Hmm. To which, like, that's kind of even argued, like, was my life in jeopardy at the time I got my wish? According to my, according to my medical records, according to my lung function, not really. I was doing great. Yeah, but if but you look at the data, right? Really, like it, it changes. It could have so changed. Fast. It could have changed so and quick. If you get, yeah. if you get sick, if you get um, it's too like late. It's too or late. or sepatia or some t- sort of like bacterial yeah. infection and yeah. fucks your lungs up. Like yeah. you could go from like killing it to not to not so to to, to being killed. To, um, we got uh, so that was the first of two pieces of CF news. Okay, okay. the second one. And this is actually uh, from an article that was just recently posted in the New York Times. You might have heard of it. It's a little, uh, it's like a little rag that puts out uh, some stories here and there. Yep. Um, and here, let me find the, the title of this article. It was called The Drug is a Miracle, but These Families Can't Get It. Uh, this came out this week. Actually, I think it might have came out yesterday in the New York Times. So uh, here's a little like summary of the of the article. It's quite long, uh, worth a read if you have seven hours of your life. What like what's the deal with the fucking New York Times? Like great, it's great investigative journalism. If you love to read, yeah, nobody got time for that. <clears throat> all right, so cystic fibrosis, I have it. We all know damages the lungs, fucks up the digestive system, and uh, and oftentimes can lead to an early death. So. Um, the drug, the development of the drug Trikafta has dramatically extended the life expectancy of those living with the disease with tens of thousands of patients in wealthy nations mm. benefiting from the medication. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for patients in much of Asia, Africa, Latin America, uh, who are blocked by the drugs manufacturer Vertex Pharmaceuticals from assessing the life-saving medication. Now, let's hope... Vertex doesn't listen to the pod because <laughs> I know they're giving me the med and I'm very grateful, but also get your fucking heads out of your asses because the contents of this article are f- so sad. Uh, uh, Seshagiri Sesh- Hudana, an Indian man whose son, Hamanth, suffered from cystic fibrosis. His name was Hamanth. Hamanth. Um, was filled with hope when he learned of Trikafta's transformative effects, as we all were a couple of years ago when we learned about Trikafta. Mm-hmm. Sadly, the family was unable to access the drug because Vertex is not making it available available in India or most of the developing countries. 
The company is not trying to sell it or allow even a local company to manufacture it. Um, and it's also blocking potential generic competitors by seeking patents in numerous countries. Whoa. Himanth died in December, a day before his ninth birthday, and 18 months after he would have been eligible to receive the drug had he lived in the U.S. Whoa. Patients and families in several countries on four continents have initiated legal and regulatory steps this week to try and force their governments to override IP protections and allow a low-cost generic version of Trikafta to be imported or made locally, IP being intellectual property. Mm. The process known as compulsory, sorry, compulsory licensing would require genetic makers to pay Vertex a royalty. So like, you know, a, a generic, a generic, sorry, gener generic, not genetic, generic um, drug company would make their version of, yeah. of Trikafta and then they would like give Vertex a, a little bump in money. Dude, is, it, is that not murder? Like, because if you think about it, so imagine this, imagine, right. um, right. imagine, well, I mean, is it not, is it not murder that no country has stepped in to like, to like, like liberate the people in North Korea that are just fucking dying of like famine every day? Yeah. I you mean, know, I mean, that, there's like, a lot, there's like, a lot of, it's, it's, there's it's a lot of, I don't think crazy you can things, call it but, murder but, because it's so. But think about how clear it is. So, like, so it clearly think, is. Think, think, <laughs> like, like, think of yeah. this, though. Okay, yeah. so imagine there was um, somebody who was suffering from a heart attack in India, and yeah. I was, and like, imagine I could just run across the border and go and give them CPR, but you, you held me back from giving them CPR, and they died. Yeah. Like, are you not culpable for like interfering with my ability to help save your life? Like, there's. There's got to be think, like I don't think so. Like all right, so think about it this way. Think about this one. I was just I've 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 been traveling a lot, right? Okay. And I was in I was in some like major cities. Yeah. Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto. Big cities. Big cities. And big cities what do big cities love? Yeah. Subways. They do, yeah. And you know what? I was riding the subway. Okay. And I was on the subway. I was on the subway platform. And I was thinking, you know what? If a guy fell down there, if a guy fucking tripped and fell down, hit his head and he couldn't get up. I'd jump down, I'd jump down, grab him, pull Fuck him yeah, over my yeah. shoulder and fucking jump up and everyone would clap and I'd probably get a medal. Me too, yeah. You know? And I would like, and the, and the city would love me and, and we like, there would be a big fucking celebration, all that. Did you plan this? But here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. If, I, if a guy fell down, hit his head and I was like, I'm going to go down and save that guy and the train was coming and someone went, don't be stupid and they grabbed me and they held me back and the guy got, the guy got spooked. Yeah. I don't think the guy that held me back would get in trouble. No, because because you introduced another factor. You introduced the train coming. Okay. How about the guy in India had the heart attack? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he had the heart attack, but there's live wires all around him on the ground. <laughs> yeah, but he the but like in the in the CF and Trikafta situation there's no, so like we're, so like we're so the, dumb. i know we are so dumb we're so it's dumb. funny to talk about this like it's funny to try to make sense of this in our dumb brains but like but the thing is 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 that the, like vertex <laughs> filing patents to yeah. protect yeah, their yeah, ip yeah. in those countries yeah. is not That's, like yeah. the the um legal system not like bearing down on them because of that is not to protect them because they're going to cause themselves some sort of like yeah. harm or something by doing that. It's, it's insane. Like they're, they're denying they're intentionally for financial reasons, stepping in and trying to block these companies from producing generic drugs yeah. because they want to make money. Like that's insane. Yeah. And, and, that, and, and like to me, it's murder. Well, but also, they're giving you life-saving medication. They are, so. yeah, right. And thank you so much, Vertex. Shout out to Vertex. Uh, big shout out to Vertex. Save my it life. Is, thank you. It is fucked. It's it's confusing. Like it's hard to it think about because well, it, it's it like it gets even more. There's so even so there's some really fucky stuff in here. It gets even more fucky to me. Um, so they've been doing that. Uh, and and uh, three of the the actions are in India. This this like this uh, this process known as compulsory licensing. Um, they they they've. Uh, so, so right. The patients and the families, they've been, they've been asking for this like regulatory step to try to force governments to override the, the IP protections. Um, and three of the actions are in India, Ukraine and South Africa. Okay. Um, where Vertex has been obstruct, obstructing efforts to make the drug available. And 
the fourth fourth action in is happening in Brazil, where Vertex is trying to win coverage for the drug because they they're like we no 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 we want to put the drug up, right? Yeah, it's like it's our drug. But patients are concerned that if if Trikafta gets to put the drug up down there, it's going to be too expensive. Mm-hmm. Right. If it went the other way around, if a generic company did it, it would be cheaper, right? So it's while like it, that piece of shit dude, um, uh, Scarelli, yes, Martin Scarelli, yeah, yeah, when he was like, yeah. "Hey, this AIDS medication yeah. is now seven hundred percent more expensive." Yeah. So while in theory, reaching patients in the developing world would bring in more revenue for a drug company, some manufacturers resist making their drugs available in poorer countries at lower prices because doing so can erode their ability to charge more in high income countries. That's fucking crazy. That's the part that I was like, are you fucking kidding me? So it's like, they're going, oh, no, no, no. We don't even want your money. Because if we start taking your money, we're going to lose a lot of this good Isn't money it? over here from these fucking suckers that are paying 320,000 US dollars a year for this shit. Dude, we don't want to fucking sell it to you for $120,000 But it's a insane year. how... There are human beings who are making these decisions. Yeah. You know, like there there are human beings who are like yeah. just looking at the numbers and yeah. going like, well, if we do that, then financially it yeah. might put us in a position where we can't charge that here. Yeah. But like there are people dying. Yeah. So like what the fuck? What are we doing? And also, I mean, I also think that that's bullshit too. I mean, you can like it's like I guess I, I I like I like really simple analogies because it makes it easier for me to understand. But if like there's a guy who's I know is a billionaire and I'm charging him, say I'm a web designer, and there's yeah. a guy who's a billionaire and he wants me to design a website for him, and I'm like, hey, I make really good websites. I I typically charge twenty thousand dollars for a website, and he's like, cool, I'm gonna pay that. And then I go to um person a person who's just lost their job. They are a solo entrepreneur. They have a young family and they're trying to start their own business. And they ask me to make a website for them. And I say, hey, I'm going to make you a website for $100. And then the billionaire comes to me and he's like, you're doing his for $100 and I'm paying $20,000. What the fuck? I, like, I don't think it's that hard to justify to that guy that this is my regular rate. I'm giving this person a discount because of their situation mm-hmm. and I'm trying to help out. Yeah. So like if you if you billionaire let me marry your daughter <laughs> in an arranged marriage, then I'll fucking give you the family discount. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like what the fuck's right, wrong yeah, with there's you? There's discounts based on yeah. it's situational discounts. You ding dong, <laughs> let me marry into the family and then you get the discount. I mean, this is this is now turning into an episode of succession. Um <laughs> which also the new season comes out. <laughs> just dropped, I think. Today. Um uh so Vertex, which which uh, you know obviously has a monopoly on the on the 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 drug. Claims that it's pushing to increase global access to Tricapta. They say that that's what they're fucking doing. Um, with its teams working every day to expand access through a range of routes, including a low mi- middle income country and low income country where access barriers are high due to challenging economic conditions and limited healthcare infrastructure, yada, yada, yada. Sounds like bullshit to me, but also shout out to Vertex. Thanks for saving my life. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, just want to make that clear. Um, <laughs> However, patients and families in developing countries remain frustrated, noting that Vertex's efforts to expand access have been limited, and the company's claim that it is working to help patients in low-income countries is contradicted by its actions. This is the other part that blew my mind, okay? Now, it blew my mind not because I was surprised, because I'm not surprised. It makes sense, but I never thought about it. That's why it blew my mind. The company's price of Trikafta is over $322,000 U.S. annually. Which is expected to cost millions of dollars over the course of a patient's lifetime, obviously. Yeah. It is, uh, it is, is all, so that's also a barrier to accessing the drug for many patients and families worldwide in general. But an analysis led by researchers in Britain found that a year's supply of the drug could be manufactured at an estimated cost of, what do you think? I don't want to go and too be re- Like, be realistic. Be realistic. Like, uh, th- th- a year supply. How many we- pills are there? Uh, three pills a day. Okay, so for a year, so you're looking at about a thousand pills. Yeah. Um, and like four. Let's con- say they're like ten four, bucks a four pill. Context, like my enzymes. I think they work out to be about a dollar a pill. Okay, I was gonna say ten dollars a pill for processing and. and okay, stuff, so, but I was gonna say so, like ten thousand dollars maybe for a year supply. All right. Uh, try five thousand seven hundred dollars. Okay. 
five thousand seven hundred dollars for a year's charging. worth of <laughs> pills that are being charged a hundred times three hundred and twenty two thousand dollars a year. Yeah. That's insane. That's wild. And like if it costs five thousand seven hundred dollars a year, I would just pay that. I would pay that in my own money. You know what's something that's that's interesting is that or at least I'd be able to, right? So so because I'm rich, I've heard I'm of, fucking killing it in the game right now. I, I, I can I can pay five thousand dollars for a drug. I um, look at me go. I I heard um so like I've one of the arguments that I've heard is that like these companies spend oftentimes you know like twenty or thirty years doing R sure. and D yeah, sure, and sure, like sure, sure. all of they're trying to recoup right. those costs and there's oftentimes that they'll. They'll try to develop drugs for really long times and, and right. they don't pan out and they can't get them approved and they don't actually end up working. But dude, think about this. But, though. but hold let's, on, hold let's, on. Hold let's let's let, do the math. Let's no, do some math. No, but hold on. Just let me let me say this for a second. I worked in events in yeah. in Dubai running corporate training events yeah. and the companies that were bawling out the hardest and never cared how much shit cost. Like personally, I experienced this were the pharmaceutical companies that were spending like half a million dollars every quarter on a team building event for like a hundred people. Yep. And it was like, it was in, they never cared about the price. They were like, like everybody in our company was like frothing at the mouth when these companies would come into, to book events. Cause yeah. they're like, Oh, it's just like, I don't know, charge them whatever. whatever. Yeah. They'll pay it. Yeah. Which again is, so let's, let's do the math then. Let's figure this out. Let's say, let's say that it actually costs 5,000. What was it? Five, seven. Five thousand seven hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Okay. For, um, for how many pills? So three thousand. pills a day. It's like a thousand. Yeah, three. Just over a thousand. Just over a thousand, right? So let, let's get specific with it. So three hundred sixty-five days um, times three. It, we're looking at one thousand nine hundred and five pills. No. Or sorry, one uh, thousand ninety-five 1, yeah. pills. Um, and that those one thousand ninety-five pills cost. Five thousand seven hundred dollars, okay. right for the year. Yeah. Now let's say it's about five dollars a pill. Let's say, um, let's just say every Canadian that has CF was taking this drug. So we'll, we'll say four thousand five hundred people times five thousand five thousand seven hundred. Yeah. For one year. Yeah. You're looking at there's so many numbers here. Twenty five million. Six hundred and fifty thousand for the year. Twenty five million dollars a y- for that one year for everybody with CF in, in Canada. In Canada, okay. Right? And of course, that's not the case. Not everybody in CF in Canada has is getting tricaptor. But like you know, I don't know how many people in the world have CF. Yeah. But it's more than the amount of people in Canada that have CF. Yeah. So let's just say they're doing like well, they're just covering Canada, and they're making twenty five million dollars in a year. Well, over 10 years, that's a bunch of money. If they're charging how much it costs. How much it actually costs. Right. Now, let's say, let's see how much they're making if there's, if, if, if <laughs> okay, 300, you're doing here 322,000 yeah. times, uh, what, did we, what did we say? 40, uh, 4,500? Yeah. 322,000. Times forty five hundred. I'm not even going to be able to read this number. Uh, what is that? That's one hundred forty four billion. Is that what that is? One two three four five six seven eight nine. Or is that one billion? It, I mean, it starts getting into numbers where you're just like, I don't, I don't even like. <laughs> it's billions it's, of dollars. It's billions of dollars. But so like, so like back of the <laughs> napkin math, you're you're looking at like. Uh, the cost of them to produce it is like twenty five million dollars. If they gave everybody in Canada with cystic fibrosis right. the medication, now, at cost now would be twenty five million dollars. Right. They're making billions my and point billions of, my, of dollars. My point to yeah. that is that no, no matter what they do, that's why they would book fucking sick team building events, <laughs> right? But no matter what they do, they're making so much money it doesn't even fucking matter, right? Who's who needs that money? Who needs all that money? It doesn't even matter, dude. It doesn't matter what fucking it's company. Fuck you money. It doesn't matter what company you run. If your company's making fourteen billion dollars in a year, mm-hmm. you could fucking, you could have, you could have millions of employees and be laughing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you could have so, like, it's just 
it's just funny money at that point. Now it's just <laughs> funny money. Like you're just, you're literally just playing with like Canadian. Well, nobody that needs point. that money. I mean, when you it's think of insane. like this is why people get so mad when you think of like the one percent of the I world's know. wealthy, like the the one percent of the one percent of the world's wealthiest people is like it's insane money. It's like it's like uncomprehendable. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it really, it really is. It's, it's fucking, not, and, and, you know, and so, okay, so anyway, to come back to all this, all the fucking math is just turned into a goddamn fucking this is a, ding a dong math, math podcast. Math podcast. Um, but the, the whole point is that there's people dying with this disease in, in countries that can't afford the drug at the cost that, that they want to fucking charge in, in America. And instead of just going, all right, hey, look, we're going to do you a solid. And give it to you for even still give it to you at a rate that you still can't fucking afford, but you can somehow scrounge. Mm -hmm. They're just going, nah, dude, nah, it, these guys, these fucking ding dongs are paying us way too yeah, much. Like, they're literally going we fucking trick these guys to <laughs> yeah, say dude, yes that's to 322,000 <laughs> a year. There's no, sorry. Like, get the fuck out of here. Stop. Yeah. Fuck, stop like, you're going to fuck up. Us. You're going to fuck up yeah, our scam that we have. Yeah. Going you're on. just cock blocking <laughs> us. And they're literally saying that. They're literally like, yep. hey, we need to actually stop these guys because, because we won't make the people are going to find out yeah. how good we have it over here, mm -hmm. which is sad, man. Yeah. It's sad. So to Vertex. Thank you. To, to Vertex. <laughs> thank you. Fuck you is what <laughs> is what someone would say if they weren't hosting a podcast <laughs> and the host was getting the medication <laughs> that you provide him with. Um, but I do say thank you for the drug. That's very great. That's very great. But I, but I bet you some other podcast would be like, "Fuck you guys, you fucking criminal crooks." Yeah. I hope I, I, mean, I, do, I hope I don't um, regret saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's this is a weird position because it it's is like weird. they it are weird. actually giving you're actually getting the drug from them. Yeah. For so wait, how does it work in Canada? Like, are you are you getting? I think that's a perfect sound right there. Yeah. The price is wrong, bitch. Yeah. That's is it? The, so are you on, like, there are people who are on compassionate. Um, I don't know. And uh, I don't want to think about that too much because I don't want to jinx this. I have no yeah. idea how it works. But there's some people who get it for free from Vertex. Like Vertex isn't charging the government or them. There's nobody I paying. Don't know. I and don't then know. there's yeah, some. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I guess like the compassionate care thing. But like, is that over now? Now that it's available? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know, dude. We should. I mean, Steph, Steph Stavros was on compassionate care and now she, she got it pulled. Yeah. She had her shit fucking That's the other thing is some people are just now. getting pulled right off, I know. off the drug. Dude, if that happened to me, I would be I would be so I would be definitely pissing on and like shitting on the 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 steps of some building. Yeah. This is not a building a threat. This that is not, this is somebody goes to work to. Yeah, this is and it wouldn't just be one building. <laughs> and it wouldn't just be one person's place of work. It would be many people's place of work. I would be shitting. <laughs> and let me tell you, when I shit. It's not like you pick, you'd get a dog bag and pick it up. It's right, not yeah. an easy clean. It's like up. you you let the rain <laughs> wash it away after. <laughs> if it sits long enough, nothing's washing. Can I right can away. I ask you uh, <laughs> uh, just to like totally change the subject, but kind of not really? Yeah, let's change it. If 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 donut has really bad diarrhea on the ground outside, what do you do? I mean, there's not really much you can do. It, what I do do, <laughs> um, <laughs> what I do do is, uh, is if it's on grass and he had, he had some diarrhea, I rip up as much of the grass as I can and just take that. Actually. Yeah. I mean, I, I make an effort to clean up as much as I can, but if he diarrhea is on the fucking sidewalk, I mean, there's nothing you can do. It depends. Well, I guess it depends on the consistency of the diarrhea. <laughs> If there's like any form to it that you can pick up anything at all, I'll try. But if it's like right. just straight, like, like if it's like a classic Jeremy Saunders shit, uh, you got to let that just, you got to just pretend that that was pee. Okay. So what do you do if, cause sometimes Rupert And I'm this. sorry if you don't like the fuck, if you don't like that, <laughs> but try having a dog and try picking up liquid shit. Like try pick, you can't, take yeah. go outside with your glass of water, pour it on the ground. Try picking that up. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. Okay, wait, like, wait, wait. So, so say, say you're in this situation where you go outside and like your dog poops once. So you'd have like one poop bag with you. Yeah. And your dog poops once, but then you're walking down the street and he like goes to poop again. But the second one is more diarrhea because he's already had that like firm first poop. Yeah, that happens sometimes. And, but it's like, it's like not liquid, but it's also not 
fully formed. You got to try. You got to try. But you don't pick- have a bag. Oh, because you um, use your one bag that you had. Yeah. When I don't have a bag, I wait. I look around. I wait for probably like three or four minutes looking around to see if another dog owner is walking by because they typically have bags. Yeah. And then you ask them. For and one. then if uh, no one comes, I just go, well, whoops, whoopsie. Yeah. I said whoops. <laughs> and then I walk away. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Um, I was just checking because I, you know, I feel guilty about that sometimes. This next, uh, this next article is fucking wild. I know you wanted to save it for uh, another time, but uh, that other time that you wanted to save it for, I've got stuff set up for that, so we're all good. Uh, and if you like, uh, if you like whales, you're gonna love this fucking next one. <laughs> Shout out Winter Sleep. Monster. <laughs> This is actually, is that not the perfect song for Fuck this yeah, article? Dude. Fuck yeah, because this article is so fucking nature is metal. Yeah. Okay. This is from Nat Geo, so you know it's legit. Why are these orcas killing sharks and removing their livers? With surgical precision. Dude, with surgical precision. That's right. When, <laughs> when seven gill shark carcasses, I don't know what a seven gill is. No. Uh seven seven gill shark. I'm guessing it's like a, I mean they're big fucking. Yeah, I feel Ooh, like it's a whoa. good size shark. Uh they are because like they like, weigh almost as much as me. As I mean it's adult. got it's got seven gills. So like if it was like I feel like seven gills is like like know. as you what's, evolve and get bigger. What's typical? I don't know. Six gills? Yeah, I don't know. Seven's all, no, that it just make, sounds like a lot. Doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's a lot of gills for a small shark to have. Why oh, oh my god, they do have truth is no one really knows why seven gill sharks have seven gills. What's normal? They have seven slits, but seven's an odd number. So what do they got? Four and three? No, seven on each side. Uh, oh, so, well, then it's a fourteen gill. You're right. That's yeah. a fourteen gill. We're talking about a fourteen gill. That's a big fucker. <laughs> That's real big. <laughs> okay. All right. So when seven gill shark carcasses with pectoral tears and missing livers began washing up on south on the South African coast, questions abound. The questions abounded. Uh, Then a marine biologist found something. Orca tooth impressions. Right? Now, kind of crazy that just like shark carcasses are washing up. I mean, this sounds like if if I was the marine biologist and I didn't have any training, because clearly this is the way I'd think if I was a marine biologist with no training, (laughs) and carcasses were washing up and they didn't have livers, I'd immediately be like, oh, shit. We got like, we got, this is the water version of... um, of alien abductions like right. we, like on land they're fucking they're they're taking cows and like right. yeah, yeah. And, and like like removing their assholes and then just leaving the carcasses in in water they must be taking these sharks livers because that would make sense that if aliens are doing that to like cows and cattle they're probably doing it to marine animals too which i would have assumed they would be doing that to the cow of the sea which yeah. is well sh- I mean, I would say it would be a... No, the cow of the sea is a very specific thing. I would say it's a manatee. Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, good. I was like, hey, you should know this. Yeah, I thought you were saying it was a shark. No, 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 the manatee. Okay. Uh, which, but, but, but instead, they're doing it to, to 14 gill sharks. Oh, so shit. in November of 2015, several se- uh, seven gill sharks washed up on the seabed of False Bay, South Africa, with clean tears in their bodies. When several more sharks were found in the same condition months later... Researchers sus- suspe- suspected that orcas were responsible. <laughs> Later, uh, necropsies, which is uh, which I didn't know that necropsies were the animal version of autopsies. Okay, uh, necropsies of several seven gill sharks and five great white sharks revealed orca tooth impressions and missing livers, <laughs> leading scientists to conclude that a pair of orcas named Port and Starboard. We're watching Liver King videos and decided <laughs> they needed to get that good stuff because liver is king. <laughs> is that what the article says? <laughs> By <Pine> that. <nut>. Primals! <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so no, uh, Port and Starboard, were, 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 they were like, I think it's Port and I think it's Starboard. They're responsible for this, which is <laughs> have, fucking crazy that they're are, like, oh, we got the suspects. <laughs> It's so <laughs> we it's know so their cute. name. It's so cute because it they're like, cute. "Well, it's Port and Starboard yeah. that we're doing it." Um, like name that we named them after the sides of ships. What's yeah? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's so cute, and you know, like you know that Port and Starboard are just like hanging out, and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> I guess I'm just talking to each other." 
And and like us on land, we listen to this. We it's go so oh, cute. Oh, oh, listen to the whale song. <laughs> oh, the whale song. And in reality, they're like, see that motherfucker right there? Yo, <laughs> go, yo, port, port, go, rip his liver out. <laughs> you know, I put it. So like, if somebody's wondering right now, like, why this? We're talking about this on a health podcast right. because right. we were going to talk about this during <laughs> uh, organ, organ donation, donation week. week. <laughs> 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 Which actually falls within uh, Shark Week as well, so it's like it's <laughs> fucking perfect. No, time. it doesn't. Does it? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe when uh, Shark Week. I don't know. Uh, I feel when like it's in is the summer. Shark Week. Uh, is it? Oh, it is July 11th to 18th. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, but Oregon Donation Week is April. It's in April sometime. Something. Yeah, yeah. Green Shirt Day is April 7th. There we go. Yeah. So okay, so what's unique about these killings is the near surgical precision with which port and starboard extract the livers of their prey. Mm. The technique suggests that they are showing others how to remove shark livers. So like these guys are like, yo dudes, we just took a course <laughs> on organ donation and <laughs> transplantation. And we want to teach share. you all. Yeah. We want to skill share this. So you guys can also <laughs> rip out your livers, the livers of your prey, because liver is king. Um, and this could be an intriguing example of culture in the animal kingdom. While orcas are known to eat sharks, the manner in which they hunt and remove organs is unprecedented. So, like, the reason why they're doing this and the reason why they... It, this is also the reason why orcas are such great hunters is because they have culture. They have an ability to share technique. They have an ability to, like, compare and contrast things that work and don't. That's so cool. Fucking crazy. Also, the crazy thing is that one of them probably in killing and eating a shark was like, they ate the liver and they were like, holy shit, this tastes good. Right. You guys should eat some liver. Yeah, it's good. dude, Port and Starboard are the liver king of the fucking sea <laughs> actually world. actually are, yeah. which is and, sad. And all, the, sad. and all the other whales are like, I'm, I think they're juicing. <laughs> and they're like, no, we're natty. <laughs> we just eat liver. Well, here, you want to see something Turns crazy? Out they're getting like <laughs> chemicals off the back yeah, of a yeah. boat somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So check this out. This is actual footage of no. Port and Starboard. No, it isn't. It is the first, um, the first ever footage caught from a helicopter. And you can see here. Um, there's uh, so. I'll explain cute, this because we're not gonna have audio in the video, but you can see from the helicopter. There's there's Port or Starboard. I, I it, you know it's hard for me to tell which one's which because <laughs> I don't know them. Yeah. But here here you can see. Okay. So the shark is there. The shark is to the right of the the one on the okay, bottom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and another. We have another, another guy comes up, oh. boom, right in the belly, pulls oh. out his liver like that. Boom. You just caught the, the death right there. They just like, they just do it, right? Like, it's like in a, like Dude. in a moment, he just tore his, but maybe not just tore his liver clean out, but like he definitely Dude, he straight up pulled off like a fucking, like, like anime style, like like ninja one fucking punch one man. punch man like yeah. hand through the heart pull the heart out and and uh, bite it right and like the other and you could see how it was a skillshare course right, because the, the other two orcas were the other like two were like around. the other two were like we're going to flank you this side we're going to flank you this side where are you going to go you can't go yeah. anywhere and then the other guy was like i'm actually flanking from below and he has no idea that i'm coming and ka -ka! and he got him yeah Fucking you know, crazy. So, um, you know, it is crazy though. Maybe they are myth misunderstood, and maybe there's another orca in their pod that needs a liver, and they actually they're performing transplantation. Performing transplantation. Yeah. So, Port and Starbird's hunting because they do have culture. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, their behavior may, may be unique, but it's unclear whether it's widespread among other orcas. Um, orcas display a wide range of diets and behaviors, and their diet includes sharks. Um, whose organs, especially their livers, liver is king, uh, are high in fat. The researchers suggest that port and starboard may be part of a subgroup of orcas that frequent the open ocean and that they developed this new behavior in order to save their teeth, which wear down when orcas bite into sharks' rough skin. Alternatively, port and starboard may have moved closer to shore, perhaps due to fishing depletement in their normal food sources. Um, uh, sorry, due to fishing depleting their normal food sources. Still, there's so much unknown about Port and Starboard. Um, it's unclear, for instance, whether they're related or how old they are. However, researchers are studying the duo to learn more about their behavior and how orcas interact with other animals. 
Um, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty cool stuff. It's kind of fucked up that they don't know whether or not Port and Starboard are related, but they could hypothesize that, that they that they made them the the suspects of a murder. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. But also that they like hypothesize that they're part of a a pod that goes into the deep ocean and to preserve <laughs> their teeth. Well, I mean, th- eat that- the livers of sharks, but they don't know whether or not they're related. <laughs> I think like, that part's easy because it's like it's clear that they're a pod because right, they yeah. they've done this a, a number of times. Yeah. They're tracking them; they're always together. Yada yada. I think for them to figure out if they're related, they'd have to get like blood work or something, probably, right? yeah. or like some sort of like. Don't you think they're like, like tracking yeah. them like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, I don't know. I mean, they're tracking them. They obviously have a tracker on them. Because, like, when you like we like the way we track at, all the like O search or whatever, and and the shark tracking that happens around the coast of Nova Scotia, yeah. like they are they're tagging the sharks. Yeah, they're tag, I, they tag. The I assume sharks. that you'd be able to get a blood sample when you're doing that. But no, maybe, dude, I think they ta- maybe I think they the way they maybe, tag the sharks, like I think them. a blood sample is like you need to have that thing in captivity. It's got to be on like a a fucking you know. It's got to be like on one of those like. Like a crane lifting it on a, a like its belly is wrapped a yeah. wrapped. Have belly. you seen videos of the O search people tagging sharks though? Don't they just shoot the fucking shark? No, they don't. They like they or like, they spear it. Maybe they trank them and then and then like bring them on and do some studies and stuff with them. Oh, I I'm thought sure that, that they oh, I thought I'm they were sh- just like they had the tracker on a gun and they go and it goes stink and maybe. it sinks in. We should have somebody on to talk about it. We should during Shark Week. We'll do it. There's a lot of things that we talked about in this episode yeah. that like if people know more about well. There's a lot of people who know more, a lot more about those things than we do. They hey, I can message. tell the difference between 12 billion and 12 million. So like, <laughs> it's a um, lot of zeros. <laughs> it's just a lot of zeros. I just see zeros. <laughs> um, yeah. The uh, speaking of you know, speaking of the the, tr- the shark tracking thing. Um, did you hear the the there's a there's a uh, a conspiracy theory going on with those with those sharks off the coast of Nova Scotia. Oh no. Yeah. Really? So there's one sh- so like I so so what I gathered if it has anything to do with Shag Harbor, don't tell it me. Doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, <laughs> hey, fuck you, dude. <laughs> uh it has to do with uh it has to do with sharks. Okay. So um there's one shark that was so what I gather is that like sharks don't go deep ocean. Mm-hmm. They never do. Or if they and 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 the furthest one's ever gone, like they they know the one shark that's gone that far before. But there was one shark that that we were tracking off the coast, and it went pretty far offshore, and we don't know why, but it went like a record distance, disappeared for a bit, and then fucking came back real quick. No. Okay, so they're going what? So the th- conspiracy theory is why the fuck did they do that? Why did that happen? I know why. Why do you think it is? Have you seen Jonathan Livingston Seagull? Uh, no, but I, I've heard you talk about it. There's one time. seagull in a flock of seagulls who yeah. just wanted to fly faster and further. Well, they think they think it's a they think that this shark went out there to like maybe try hunting, and then it got scared back into shore. And the reason that none of them go out there is because megalodon is still out there. No, yeah. no, yeah, megalodon, <laughs> big fucker, all the way down in the the deep abyss, deep depths, yeah. scary. All right, um, this next little piece here, <laughs> just start a shark podcast. I mean, fuck it, let's just start a podcast where we talk about whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's this nice. next one. I took this article and I ran it through ChatGPT to make it funny, and let me tell you, it didn't. <laughs> so we're gonna read it as written and um and uh we'll see if it makes you laugh um but it is interesting and this is something that you actually share with me brian and uh and i found it kind of kind of cool so there's an odd correlation between brain size and yawning oh yeah i hope now, that it's not that your brain is small if you yawn a lot because i've been yawning a lot but it's mostly due to going to therapy well oh fuck here we go Get ready to yawn because once we start talking, you actually just make yeah. Yawn. Once you start talking about yawning, once you fucking see someone yawn, yeah. once you hear someone yawn, you start yawning. So get ready to yawn. Then this is it. Now, now I'm starting reading exactly what chapter two said. <laughs> get ready to yawn because a 2021 animal study on yawning is here to teach us more about the riveting topic. Researchers analyzed over 1,200 yawns from 55 mammal species and 46 bird species to determine that animals with larger brains and more neurons tend to have 
longer lasting eons. <sighs> it turns out that bigger brains need longer yawns to properly cool them. Mm. Just like how bigger ice cream scoops need bigger cones to prevent brain freeze. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> my, my yawns aren't that long, though, so maybe that means I have a small brain. The study also found that mammals yawn longer than birds, likely because birds have hotter cores than mammals. <sighs> Dude, I, I, as soon as you start talking about yawning, it makes me so yawny. Um, they have hotter cores than mammals, making their yawns shorter than the attention span of a goldfish. Hey, oh, oh <laughs> shit. Got me with that one. And if you're working, if you're wondering why we yawn in the first place, the researchers link or think that yawning is a way to cool down the brain. So next time you're feeling sleepy, try yawning instead of taking a nap. <sighs> you know, what's funny is it's kind of like, you know, when you're using your, your MacBook, and uh, and you're like doing a bunch of shit on it, and the fan starts running. Yeah. <laughs> is that like is 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 our yawn? Is a yawn like the fan on a MacBook to our well, this, brains? This, I mean, this is a, maybe the, maybe this is new research. Like, do they mean cool down by like it's like the temperature's heating up? We're doing a lot of shit in here, and now we got to cool it down. Or like, look, I'm not a researcher, but I, I know that. think that's bullshit. <laughs> and here's the thing: I read something else which to me makes a little bit more sense. Actually, no, I didn't read this. I was listening to this on Stuff You Should Know, and they did an episode on yawning. And there's a bunch, there's a bunch of speculation. No one knows what yawning is. There's a bunch of speculation out there. We're trying to figure it out. Now, obviously, these guys think it's to cool down a brain, but there's another um, series of people that believe that it has something to do with uh, transition from one state to another, sympathetic to parasympathetic nervous system. Well, I don't know if it's that specific, but yeah, we could you could look at it that That's way. That's what right? my therapist says because, like, during therapy, yawn I lot. yawn right. a now, fuck. Okay, load. so like, so that more, way more than any other time in my life, right? That and that is, makes sense to you that like that's a transition for a sure. transitional state. For sure. The way it makes sense to me is whenever I take mushrooms, whenever I eat yeah, some yeah. psilocybin. Yeah, me too. When I'm going from sober to tripping, that transition, I just start yawning. And that's a big transitional Holy period shit. between, you know, for the brain. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, here we go. Oh, Dude, yeah, it's, that's cra a, it's crazy that's when a... you start talking about how, how crazy it just makes you do that. Yeah. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube and you, you are also yawning, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> yeah. um, so previous research has shown that yawning is contagious. Um, and this study adds further support to the theory that it serves... Uh, social function. Yawning together could be a way of uh, of getting a group into the same state of mind, like a shared experience at a terrible concert. <laughs> or like a mushroom trip. Yeah. While the researchers didn't find a link between yawning and intelligence, they did confirm that the longest yawns come from humans at a whopping 6.5 seconds. That seems long. <laughs> Mine's not 6.5. Mine go sure. like five seconds. Yeah. Mice, on the other hand, have the shortest yawns, lasting only about 0.8 seconds. They <laughs> Mice just go, they are go, so ah, cute. Ah. Come here. Um, this is uh, this is Paper Mario <laughs> yawning. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why they're always so on edge. That's uh, that was the joke there. Miss the uh, pun. Overall, this study uh, on yawning has taught us that bigger brains equal longer yawns, and that yawning is both contagious and social. So the next time you feel a yawn coming on, remember that you're just cooling off your brain and bonding with your fellow yawners. <laughs> chat GPT is so funny uh, my new favorite chat GPT prompt is to um, tell me like <laughs> like it's part of a scene from the Ninja Turtles and it's so good I love I it. like that I love all right let's um, myself in Ninja Turtle folklore. let's move on to uh, this week's edition of what the hell is that the news theme song i don't know i just threw that, that in there <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, we should get donovan to make up a little like sound button for what the hell we should yeah all right this is uh fucking gross all right uh a gym bro not nathan okay i was gonna say thank god <laughs> <laughs> a gym bro ate dog food for the gains <laughs> and here's how it worked this is from the New York Post. Uh, Henry Clarcy, he was 21. He scored 2.8 2 million views last month 
uh, as aghast TikTokers watched him choke down dog chow for the gains. He said, quote, I tasted the dry dog uh, food kibble and it tasted like little pieces of rocks. The <laughs> Buffalo resident told the post, recalling the gag inducing nosh. It was not comfortable at all to eat. It was super hard to bite down, bite, bite down on. The gym bros of TikTok will do anything to consume more protein, and their latest indulgence is even more disgusting than a chalky smoothie. Have you ever eaten dog food? Fuck no, dude. Have you? Uh, no, but I've eaten cat food. Oh, wet, ew, what kind? Wet cat food. Are, are you fucking serious? I have, yeah, dude. So I went to a, I went to a Christmas potluck uh, like 10 years ago, and uh, I decided to... Um, take i was with my friend cameron and we made we made hors d'oeuvres little like crackers with wet cat food on them oh my god dude and a uh, like cucumber and some thousand island dressing on top and we took them to the potluck and fed them to everybody Ugh. but we felt like it was unfair for us to feed them to everybody without eating them first so we videotaped ourselves eating them oh god and did you throw up Dude, I was gagging. So I went to the bathroom. I was like arching my back and it was so nasty. But you know what's funny is I believe it is kind of in your head because... No, I don't think it is, dude. No, I think it really actually is fucking gross. No, it is gross. For sure it's gross. But but when when the people ate them at the potluck, like half the tray was gone probably and people were eating <sighs> them and they were like, they were like, this is kind of gross. But like they were like this tuna maybe a little bit. It's cold. the wet, dude. It's the wet. I mean, do you remember Catfish Cooley eating the wet dog food? No, no. You don't yeah, remember this guy? Mighty dog food, some kind of shit. <laughs> no. This is cheaper cat. You don't remember this? I don't think so. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Anyway, it was. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, to anyway. Uh, oh no, dude. You can't keep oh, it down. No. Oh no, dude! Turn that off. Turn that off. It doesn't bother me, but I know somebody's listening right now. That would be me. If you you gave me fucking wet cat food, I would throw up. Like it would just be so violent. It's it's nasty. Violent. Just just to clarify, dry dog food. Like I mean, okay. Like I would probably go, oh god, but like wet, dude. I think I'd rather eat my own shit. Uh, There's, uh, I'll show you video after of me eating. No, no, I'm okay. Anyway, uh, dog food has lots of protein. So these these workout warriors they posted a, what a, what appears to be satirical clips of themselves uh, feasting on slop meant for pups. Others have joked they would nibble on kibble if it meant being ripped. "Quote: I definitely wouldn't do it again," Clarice admitted, because even if dog food has high protein content, it's definitely not worth it. Yeah, bro, for show. Clarice, Only because there's so many more good options. And also dangerous, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Clarice initially yeah. discovered dog food is rich in protein after watching a TikTok in which a user warned uh, fellow gym rats not to be tempted to try it. <laughs> he didn't follow that what? advice. Clarice, who boasts over 171,000 followers on the platform, pledged to taste the bitter bits if his own video reached 15,000 likes. To his surprise, the clip consumed uh, two point, or 21.2 million views and 2.5 million likes. I said that if I get 15,000 likes, I'd try it, but it ended up going to 2.5 million, and I felt like I had to try it for the video. He said he thought the colossal protein concentration of 666 grams in 200 grams of pedigree was a glitch on the popular, <laughs> dieting, uh, on the popular dieting and fitness app MyFitnessPal, but he decided to humor his followers anyway. As if they even have it on my fitness pal. That's, that's fucking, crazy. I mean, that's wrong. Also, yeah. it must be a glitch because that's just like user input. Yeah. The supposed miscalculation on the diet tracker would mean a single cup of kibble would have as much higher, uh, would have a much higher protein content than every, even build, build, bodybuilders need in a day. Yeah. So for more sure. than what you'd need a day. For sure. For reference, adult men need only about 56 grams of protein a day. Overconsuming protein can actually be harmful to human health, resulting in complications such as kidney damage. Yeah, Pedigree man. dog food is a formulated uh, is formulated for dogs. While the food would not be harmful if a human consumed it, we do not recommend pet food for human consumption. A spokesperson from Pedigree told the Post, "Clarice isn't the first person to lap up dog uh, delicacies. Tennis star Serena Williams even dared to munch on her pup's room service meal in 2016, getting really sick afterwards." Uh, food <laughs> blogger Xian Lee was duped into taste, t- taste testing food for dogs as part of a furry's 
kitchen stunt in 2020. Don't know what that is. Don't want to know. <laughs> For those who do uh, bark take, short-term consumption of the chow isn't likely to cause too much harm, though it's not recommended. Um, while most ingredients in dog food are similar to human food, they're meant to meet the needs of a dog, not humans, who have different nutritional properties, or sorry, priorities. Um, according to Healthline, many pet foods are made with unappetizing ingredients such as meat scraps, ground up bones, organs, skin, liver is king, uh, and other animal oh. parts that are unfit for human consumption. Aside from the possibility of foodborne illness from contamination, certain brands of dog food also contain synthetic forms of vitamin K, vitamin K3, which can be toxic to human in high doses. Uh, while the concentration of the vitamin is low in pet grub, People shouldn't be gorging it regularly. Yeah, duh. Do we have a video of this person eating this? You know what? I had the video and I just didn't want to. I, I was like, I'm not true. Yeah. I'm not giving this anymore. Like, this is dumb. It is. Yeah. And this is why TikTok is dumb. But we kind of want to see it. But it's dumb. I did yeah, watch I mean, it. I mean, fuck, you're right. You got me. I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're I right. I, I don't want to you know? see it. Like if you want to, if you want to, if you want to get, if you want to get, if you want to get yoked, just, just work out. Oh, oh, oh it's a deep burn. Get the deep burn. <laughs> oh, it's so deep. So deep. <sighs> that is a good idea. Oh, I can barely lift my right you wanna, arm. I did you so want to get going to the gym again? I don't again? know if you heard me counting. I did over a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should get back to the gym. Um, yeah. But we shouldn't be eating dog food. Folks, hope you enjoyed that. That was really fun. Listen. Come back. Come back next week. Come back and hang out with us. We want to see your lovely faces, even though we don't see anybody. Uh, we want to just feel your presence. And you can do that by uh, subscribing to the podcast, following the podcast on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your pods. You can also come on over to Discord where we could see your face if you posted a picture of it. We could, yeah. Um, the discord link is in the show notes. So come hang out with the little sweet little community we built over there. There's a selfies channel. Yeah. There you is. can just put a selfie up. Yeah. You can if you feel like it. Dude, you did, you, did you look at, we, have, we also have an, ex, we also have a graphic content channel. Some did you see the last, the stuff. last post in there? I did. The bloody, the bloody, um, the did. bloody underwear. I did. Someone had their butthole removed in surgery and they were still healing and they had a coughing fit and they bled out their, non-existent butthole and they took a photo of their underwear that had a pad in it and it was full of blood it was really cool it was <laughs> it was so cool dude when i opened it i was like oh i don't know i don't know about this channel anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's for it's <laughs> for I that i know it's so gnarly so uh yeah come on over to discord we'd love to see you over there and um and listen folks uh, hit us up info at sequoiapodcast.com if you have comments if you have a, a thought if you heard something interesting on the podcast and you want to elaborate or add to it um, uh, oddly enough we had someone email us recently about the hair in the punctum and uh, they sent me a couple of articles uh, uh, not articles rather journals of medical uh, um, ed, um, uh, examples of people that actually had hair in their punctum like I did so crazy. So it actually isn't. Well, I mean, it is rare, but it's not as rare as we thought. So you can send us information or whatever, info at sickboypodcast.com. And if you want to be a guest on the show or you have someone that you would like to be a guest on the show, go to sickboypodcast.com, click the Be a Guest button, and take it from there. And listen, we, Jerry and I are both, we're, we're dum-dums. And so yeah, if yeah. there's anything that we said on the show today that you could sh shine a little bit more light on, you can um, write that in an email please. to... Um, Taylor Not, never gonna get read <laughs> at gofuckyourself.com. Uh no, but actually send it to letters at sickboypodcast.com because uh we'll we'll like do an update on something we <laughs> talked about yeah. today, maybe on a later episode if you tell us about it. Or like or we're always looking for really great professional guests who can yeah. come on and speak yeah. to some of these topics. So uh let us know. And if you're uh if you're a marine biologist and you want to come on for Shark Week, dude, yeah, dude, come on. Let us know. We're Let's happy to have that. you on. Um, also a huge thank you to the folks who make this show happen. Uh, thanks to Jeff Lonis, who is our manager and, uh, he's also got a, a really great roster of speaking talent over at the talent bureau. So you can check that out and a uh, huge shout out to Rich O'Coin for the theme music. 
Uh, Rich has a bunch of tour dates up, and he's traveling all over the place. He's coming to Japan. Including Japan. All over Rich. Japan. Well, I know we have a lot of Japan listeners. I was thinking, dude, we should just go with him to Japan. It would yeah, be like the perfect opportunity to do that. But anyway. I know. Um, yeah, so if you want to see Rich tear it up live, it's the best live show ever. Um, check him out at uh, Rich O'Coin. You can search him up and find his tour schedule very easily. <laughs> He's also, uh, if you download songs on your uh, Beat Saber, um, he's got a song on Beat Saber. Whoa, does he? I mean, um, he doesn't. Someone put it up. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah it's I sick. Get it. It's hard. Uh, cool. Sweet. Uh, that is it for this week. I'm Brian. I'm Jeremy, and this is Sick Boy. Whoa.